In this video, I take these two damaged, double exposed film photos and generate a brand new photo of my friend, Chloe's first day on the world. These are the only photos her mum has of this special event and she was devastated when she saw the print come out. Chloe is going to give the remastered version to her mum for her birthday as a surprise. This is the photo that I want to put in it. Time to introduce Chloe. She's my friend from uni and unless we would invite her out, would basically spend all day sitting and cross stitching. When I got my travel backpack, she offered to make some patches for it. I love what she produced, but she wouldn't let me pay for it. I asked her if we could skill trade. She came back to me with these two photos and their story. My first attempt was pretty terrible. It was much harder than I anticipated. I have some experience in Photoshop, but I've never tried anything of this scale. I spent half a day to achieve this. It hit a point where I had to restart with the knowledge that I'd made from all these mistakes. Faces and high detail areas are near impossible to fake or recreate or generate. So this time I started with a photo that had the least amount of damage in these areas. Luckily, both photos are of a similar composure and angle. I was able to transfer the better parts of the second photo onto the primary one. The first item was the hair. I cut this out and resized it. Positioning onto the primary photo and using the erase tool with a feathered edge to blend in the edges of the new layer. Chloe's little baby face in the second photo was much better as the eyes were open, so I moved this across with the same process. As I knew her mother's face would be the hardest part, I made a start on it. Photoshop's tool Content Aware Fill is incredibly powerful. It will fill the selected space with computer generated pixels based on the areas you have highlighted. I relied heavily on this for areas where the damage was in both photos and it was impossible to recreate this. I would also sometimes highlight information from the other photo where it was better, less damaged, or just to get more of it with a combination of both in order to generate the image that I wanted. I had to use all the good information that was left in these photos. Next, I tried to tackle what would end up being the biggest challenge, removing her cat from her face. I masked it out and attempted to manipulate the colors to fade the cat's face away. None of my attempts produced results I was happy with, so I had to leave it and come back when I had some more ideas on how to tackle it. To see some progress, I did some easier areas. Her ear was also difficult. The colors and textures of the two exposures had mashed together. I went for a similar technique of selecting the area and reducing the intensity of the colors I didn't want. To hide the shape from the second exposure, I used the smudge tool and to blend the edges. I avoided using this technique too much because smudging or painting ends up smoothing the pixels and it just doesn't look realistic. I have pretty much rebuilt the final image that you end up seeing with all the techniques mentioned so far. Save when I'm happy, revert when I'm not. I'm definitely not a pro, so this isn't a tutorial but I'll summarize the process in the description to help you out. And also feel free to ask in the comments if you have any specific questions. The background of the second photo was better. So I merged that into the photo I was working on and I spent the next few hours cleaning up the image and removing as much of the double exposure as I could. After deciding that the background was too damaged and too much effort to fix, I started trying to replace it, making it look like a plain wall. Again, this didn't work, so I left it and came back later. The image is starting to look so much better and I hadn't used the second photo for a while. So I decided to reframe the canvas and crop it in, start homing in on that final product. Back to the cat. I got rid of its eyes and tried removing the outline again. It's starting to look better, but it's definitely not there. I quickly went through the photo, um, removing bad patterns and reoccurring marks caused from content aware fill. This helps preventing those same pixels getting used as source again and then multiplying the artifact further. Because the background isn't too important for the memory, I thought maybe I could find a similar photo with a good background and then fit that into the image. So I started searching Google to find one that would fit. It was much harder than I expected. To look realistic, the photo had to be from the same era with a similar perspective and angle. During my search, I realized I have lots of footage of my birth so I might be able to find an angle in there as I have many more frames to choose from and it's already the right era. Now, I'm gonna be the first to admit I was not the prettiest baby at birth. I believe it took around nine hours for me to come out. Sorry, mum. 
This is why my head's a bit misshaped and deformed. Um, anyways, I found two potential screen grabs of a very similar angle. So I took those and we'll see if I can fit them in. The first one didn't work, but the second did. I went the whole way and fitted this background into the photo. Now it's starting to come together. I'm very happy with how it's looking. I cropped it in yet again, just to get closer to that final piece. Next, I had another go at fixing the damaged corner of the smile by taking and reshaping the good side. This was a terrible idea. It just looks slightly off. It's one of those things that it's tiny and you don't look at it and go, that's what's wrong but it just doesn't make sense to the brain. And it's those smaller details that can make a huge difference. I decided to come back to it when I had a better idea. Talking about smaller details, I wasn't happy with the shadows and the textures of the neck. It looked too flat and as if the lighting was wrong. A similar situation had happened around the head and the pillow. I analyzed the photo to list up what else wasn't quite right. And I sent it out to others who hadn't been staring at the same photo for two days straight to see what kind of feedback I got. The main issues were the mouth, the neck, a gray fringe around her face, and the ear definitely needed more work. I realized that some of the face damaged by the cat was in good condition on the other photo. So I pulled in that section of the face to crop and blended it into the current design. By this point, I was very happy with the final photo. So I took the end of the day off to have fresh eyes the next to finalize it. I will do this for any piece of work I truly care about. If you feel like you've finished and you've been staring at it for days on end, there will be things that you have missed. You need to walk away and reset to clearly see it and guarantee that you're happy with it. Upon revisit, it was clear to me that the neck still wasn't shaded correctly and the gray fringe from the face was still there. I touched these up and was left with the final image. This is the result of my four day marathon and crash course in photo recovery. I love new challenges and this definitely pushed my ability. I will always see the small parts that could be improved further, but when this photo is printed out and it's sitting in a frame where you can't digitally zoom, I don't think I could have done a better job and I'm very proud of the outcome. It's time to call Chloe and show her the picture. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are Excellent. you? I'm good. I'm good. We're, we're doing all right. Got, all, got at least two good. doggos on the floor around me. That's the dream. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> right, so I suppose we should get you this, this photo. So I'm going to send you a link. It's... Oh, well, I'll let you look at it first and then more. <laughs> it's good. We'll crop it okay. nicely, um, okay. depending on what aspect ratio you want to print it on. Um, and okay. then it will be good. You're just waiting for it to download now. Oh. oh my god, that looks so much better than the original. Yeah, are you happy with it? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Like, first things first, if there's anything that you, like, you spot that you want changing or you don't like, let me know because I can do that. Yeah. Na well, not now, but in a bit. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, mum's going to love that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so chuffed with that. It looks so good. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, I should actually get back to work because... Whoops. Yeah. Bye! A few days later, Chloe had printed off the photo and it was time to give it to her mum for her birthday. It was so rewarding to see her reaction from the photo. This is the photo that I want to put in it. Don't, because you're going to start. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I was so gutted when that um, photo came out. Stupid. So I asked Tim ages ago, I said, is there anything you can do with this? And he's like, yeah, why not? Chloe is now taking her passion for cross stitching to the next level. It was like, just over lockdown, I started doing so many, just just like, just like started stitching so many different things. And I was like, I can't put these all up in my house. Like, <laughs> I've got too many. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna sell them. And then if nobody wants them, nobody wants them. But like, at least they're up for sale. So far, I have sold zero. Um, but <laughs> you never know. Um, I'll just show you quickly. This is one I made for Julie. It's a picture of her dog. If you would like a one-off handmade design, please send her a message. I put her contact down in the details. Details? Description. I'll leave you with the message that Chloe's mum, Kerry, sent me. Thanks for joining me on this story. See you soon. Hi, Tim. Um, I'm Kerry, <laughs> Chloe's mad mum. Um, it's not my 48th birthday today. I'm actually 25, uh, which makes Chloe very young, but that doesn't matter. Um, anyway, uh, looking a little bit red-eyed. Mm, sorry about that, my love. Um, very surprised and very pleased with look how gorgeous I was 22 <laughs> years ago. Um, thank you for making this picture one picture rather than two back in the old days when you probably don't remember when you had to put a film in a camera to take a picture and had to wind it on and then take it to the shop to get it developed but then not realizing that you've already used the film and then you double use it which ruins the picture of your daughter's greatest birthday um <laughs> Fantastic, absolutely appreciate it. Um, can you uh, make me look more beautiful next time? Um, <laughs> and Chloe, not so googly eyed. Um, <laughs> but no, really, really appreciate what you've done and I am gobsmacked. So thank you very much. If I have more photos that need editing, <laughs> you will be, well actually Chloe will be the first person I speak to and then it'll be you. But thank you, sweetheart. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs>